Shalom Yesharela. First and foremost, let me give all the praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Recha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing to the Ophelia Akim that's preached the word in all truth and sincerity. Alone to his life, foreigner brothers that like the heathens. But the line of outside goes back to the nation of Israel. Which nation of Israel are you so called Negroes? Latinos and Native Americans through the prophecies and curses of Deuteronomy 28 chapter and throughout the Bible. So this is really a call, a moth for a lesson, and um, today's lesson will be entitled Being in the Truth is a Form of a Vow unto the Lord. I'm just going to go on some precepts and uh, Lord Wanna, you brothers and you sisters out there, be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimon Shai. You know, because in the law, you know, it talks about, you know, making vows unto the Lord, you know, and that, you know, we're supposed to, um, you know, keep our word to the Lord and vow and vow unto him, you know, and by being in the truth, you know, is a form of a vow, you know, because, you know, we, uh, you know, we're supposed to be in this truth until the end, you know, which we know. You know, some on the elect is going to fulfill that, but, you know, you even have a lot of, you know, wicked Israelites in the troop as well. You know, two-thirds that's in the troop as well. But, you know, when you go to law in Numbers 31, it says the law of vows. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which Yahweh had commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord Yahweh, or swear an oath to, to bind his soul with a bond. He shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. You know, right. You know, so we're supposed to keep our end of the bargain. You know, by being a man of our word. And this, the final word of vow. It's, uh, it's from the Hebrew word, nadar. Nadar, which means to vow, make a vow, uh, to promise. Uh, to do or give something to the Most High Yahweh, you know, so a vow is a promise, you know, because, you know, we understand once we leave the faith, you know, it, um, then the Lord uh, is justified in, in taking us out, you know, because when you go to Deuteronomy 23 and verse 21, it says, when thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord Yahweh thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For Yahweh thy God will surely require it of thee, and it will be sent unto thee. So if you break our promise, our oath, our vow, and worship Yahweh by Shimon Shai, then that is a form of a sin. You know, departing from the living God, from Yahweh by Shimon Shai. And the scriptures, you know, I'm going to go into that, um, you know, as I, you know, um, you know, later in the lesson. It says, But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin to thee. So if you don't make a vow to the Lord, because, you know, a vow could be anything, but I'm really focusing in regards of, you know, being in the truth, you know. So if you don't make a vow to the Lord outside of, a, you know, outside the truth, there's no sin to you because, you, for example, if you say, you know, um, let's say you're going to stay away from meat, right? And you, you don't vow, vow, you know, you may... Pray to the Lord, you know, Lord, I'm not going to eat meat for a while. But you you didn't make a vow unto the Lord. You didn't make an oath to the Lord saying you're not going to eat meat. So, and if you eat them eating it, then it's not a sin because you didn't make a vow unto the Lord. So that's what that's talking about. But I'm, I'm applying, you know, uh, in this lesson, I'm applying in regards of being in the truth. You know, making an oath to the Lord that you're going to stay in the truth to the end. You know, which we know, we know we can't control our lives in the faith. But, you know, uh, being in the truth, the Lord looks at that as a vow. It says, verse 23, it says, That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep and perform. So we have to be a man of our word. You know, it says, Even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed to Yahweh thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. Yeah. You know, so whatever we, you know, uh, if you make a vow to the Lord, we have to keep it, you know. Um, Isaiah 1 and 28 it says in the destruction of the transgressors and the other sinners shall be together 
and they that forsake the Lord, Yahweh shall be consumed. Because if you forsake the Lord, thou, that's like you forsaking the oath that you made with the Lord that you would be in the truth to the end. But if you forsake the Lord, then you're going to be consumed by that fire, nuclear fire. You see, because it says in Hebrews 3 and 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Yeah, so, you know, um, if you depart from Yahweh by Shimon Shai by leaving the truth, you know, um, that's you dishonoring your vow that you made to the Lord. You know, because even um, when Moses has sprinkled the blood upon children of Israel, you know, they had made a vow that they would worship the Lord only. Um, let's go to that account. I believe it's Numbers 21. Let's get that real quick. Um, numbers 21. And uh, let me find it real quick. Um, Moses sprinkles. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Exodus 24. Um, Exodus 24. And verse... Um, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll just start verse 1. As pe people affirm their covenant with Yahweh. Uh, Exodus 24 1 and he said to Moses come up unto the Lord Yahweh thou and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and worship you afar off and Moses alone uh, shall come near the Lord Yahweh but they shall not come nigh neither shall the people go up with them because you know the Lord was dealing with Moses alone um, and Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord Yahweh and all, all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord Yahweh have said we will do. So this is an oath right here that our forefathers made, you know, with the Lord that, you know, we will obey, uh, be obedient to the Lord's uh, law, such commandments, you know, which are the words. It says, And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar to, under that hill. And twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacred peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord Yahweh have said we will do and be obedient. So this is an oath right here, a vow. You see? And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which Yahweh had made with you concerning all these words, man. You know, so yeah, so this is the point I want to get. So, you know, the Israelites, they acknowledged, they made a, a vow to the Lord that they will be obedient and and uh, keep the law, touch commandments. So when you apply that in today's day, the uh, Israelites are coming to truth. You know, once they... Accept and worship Yahweh by Shemoshah, that is a form of a vow. And if those individuals, Israelite individuals in the truth leave, then they're disobeying um, their vow that they made to the Lord by departing from the Lord. You see? So all of us that is in the truth, we made a vow in worshiping Yahweh by Shemoshah by keeping the laws of commandments to the best of our ability. And, and worshiping the Lord in all truth and sincerity, you know, because the fallouts is not going to end well for them, you know. And it speaks about that in Ezekiel 18 and verse 24. But when a righteous t turns away from his righteousness and commit iniquity, meaning an Israelite man that was in the truth, he fell out the truth, and he goes back to the world, start committing iniquity, sin upon sin. Going back to being a Baptist in the Baptist church, you know, committing adultery again and, you know, um, doing drugs, you know. Um, it says, and do according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he have done shall not be, be mentioned. Yes, yeah, so all the righteousness that that Israelite man, he did when he was, when he was in the truth, is not going to be mentioned because he fell out the truth. 
and his trespass that he had trespass and and his sin that he had sin and them shall he die man so it's not going to end well for fallouts you know because when you go to verse 21 this applies to the elect but if the wicked will turn from all the sins that he had committed which is talking about wicked Israelites because we all were wicked when we were in the world you know because we were doing all the things of the world that the Lord is not pleased in. It says, it says, but if the wicked will turn from all the sins that he have committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. So this applies to the elect of Israel that repents and starts to worship Yahweh Shemoshai. And he's not worshiping false gods as he did when he was in the world. All his transgressions that he had committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. And his righteousness that he have done, he shall live, man. So once again, this applies to individuals, uh, the elect that, you know, that was wicked in the world. But they, when they heard the truth, they repented. And they did the works, you know. Have I any pleasure at all that that the wicked should die? Said Yahweh Shemoshah, and not that he should return from his ways and live. Yeah, so, you know, um, so, yeah, so it's not going, you know, the, uh, all Israelite individuals that came in the truth, which is a form of vow to the Lord, and left the Lord, departed from the living power, Yahweh Bashem on side, they're going to be destroyed, you know, it's not going to end well for them, but it will end well for the righteous, the elect, because they're going to endure to the end, and they, and they didn't, um, for Satan. Yahweh by Shimon Shai in the uh, uh, in the truth. Uh, Saint John three and eighteen. He that believe on him is not condemned. So this applies to the elect. So the elect is gonna believe in Yahweh by Shimon Shai to the end, and they're not condemned. But he that believe it not is condemned already. So you know this applies to fallouts. You know two thirds of Israel that that's not gonna repent. They are already condemned. You know it says because he had not believed. In the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh, which is Yahweh Shai, you know, so it's gonna, it's, it, it will end well for the righteous, but it's not gonna end well for the wicked, you know. So, you know, going back to the time of our lesson, being, being in the truth is a form of a vow to the Lord, you know, and um, and I gave a couple examples, and um, you know, Lord willing us, man, you know, because you know that's why we gotta be humble. We gotta say Lord willing as well because we don't know. If we are part of the elect, and that's why we say Lord willing, and that's why we serve the Lord with fear and trembling, because we're hoping to be a part of that number, man. You know, Lord willing, the Lord keep the Rechah Kodash upon us to stay in the truth to the end. So, so yeah, I kind of just want to make a lesson on that. Lord willing, I will And uh, till next time, Shalom.